Hello, BookTube. Thank you for popping into my channel. This is Booking Through Life, and I'm Mary, and today I have three books I'm going to review. They're all retellings for Jane Austen July. Uh, <laughs> they are, they range the gamut of, on whether or not I like them or not. So let's, let's get right into it. The first book that I read, and it's also got the lowest review is Eliza's Daughter by Joan Aiken. I was really excited to read some more Joan Aiken books. I have her Mansfield Park Revisited and I really enjoyed it. And I've heard a lot about um, Jane Fairfax, which I have uh, written by her, but I haven't read that one yet. Uh, I've heard that it's very good. So I had high, high hopes I was going to love this. And it's a sequel to Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility. Eliza's Daughter is the name of it. And uh, I gave it a dismal two stars. It got two stars and not one star because I think she's a good writer and it was well written. Uh, it just... I came away thinking Joan Aiken must hate Sense and Sensibility and hate most of the characters in Sense and Sensibility because they they were giving very dismal uh, <laughs> plot lines after after Sense and Sensibility. So this picks up um, anywhere from 10 to 18 years later as. Um, young Eliza's daughter is growing up. So, okay, it's it gets a little confusing because there's three generations and they're all Eliza. So in Sense and Sensibility, uh, Colonel Brandon's first love was Eliza. And uh, he ends up, he they want to get married, but then um, his father forces her to marry his older brother. And then um, she has a very unhappy marriage and things happen. I think she leaves the marriage and she gets pregnant and she has a daughter. So Eliza has a daughter also named Eliza. And Eliza the first uh, dies in childbirth. And so Colonel Brandon then becomes the ward of Eliza the second. Eliza the second is seduced by Willoughby in Sense and Sensibility. And, and and this doesn't happen on the book stage. It's something that we've we've we hear about. And she has a daughter who is also named Eliza. Sometimes in this book called Liza. Um, and so she is um, Eliza the mother, Eliza the second is alive in the book for at least part of the book. Sorry, there's going to be massive spoilers because I just don't even think you should read this book. Um, and uh, so, but she, but Eliza the third goes to live with a woman who um, is sometimes a wet nurse and also does foster care, I guess, not, not a, an orphanage, but foster care for illegitimate children. And that's where uh, Eliza the Third grows up. And then she eventually goes on a quest to try to find her parents and um, and also just to, yeah, kind of um, become her, you know, come into her own self. But what what's happens to um, to Eleanor and Edward, Edward's a very bitter, um, man, very uh, workaholic. Uh, he and Eleanor do not have a happy marriage. Eleanor is just uh, depressed and in a state of, uh, you know, just unhappiness. We don't see Marianne and Colonel Brandon much because they have gone, Colonel Brandon has gone back into the military and he's in India. Marianne has gone with them. Later we we find out that they had a very unhappy marriage. Uh, so it's just, it's dismal. Uh, somewhere this is said it's rich with humor and her language is compelling. Her language is compelling. Um, it, but it's not rich with humor. Um, and it says it's a cheerful spinoff. It's not a cheerful spinoff. I thought it was, uh, like I said, very depressing and, um, uh, Eliza does end up having good fortune, but her, her ending was very unsatisfactory to me. So anyway, two stars, 
don't recommend reading that. Then I had another Joan Aiken book, and it was um, The Watsons and Emma Watson, Jane Austen's unfinished novel completed by Joan Aiken. This I gave three stars. I liked it much better. Um, it starts off, you, you read um, The Watsons by Jane Austen in its entirety, untouched, and that, I'll just talk about that first. I, I love that. I thought that was very fascinating. I feel like it's such um, a loss for all of us that Jane wasn't able to complete it before she passed. And um, it really is just the kind of almost like the beginning rough draft, as many will, of you know. Um, but it's, it is exciting to think about maybe what she was going to do with the characters. I don't think Joan Aiken tapped into that. Uh, she even adds a new character, adds a character uh, to the story um, that becomes central in the story. And some interesting things happen. There's a lot of plot twists and turns. It, it was interesting. Um, maybe I gave it a three star be stars because I wasn't fully satisfied with the way she um, imagined what was going to happen. Uh, there were, like I said, there were some shocking twists and turns, and then there's a new hero, um, introduced and there, there were some decent, um, conclusions. I wasn't totally unsatisfied, but, uh, yeah, three, three stars for Emma Watson, five stars for the Watsons. <laughs> so that was my next book. And then finally, I just finished this one. I've had this book on my TBR for several years for Darkness Shows the Stars by Diana Peter Friend. Friend. Um, there, you can probably pronounce that better than, than I can. I think the cover is absolutely beautiful. It is a persuasion retelling. And I give this four stars. I really enjoyed it. It's, um, it's written in a fantasy uh, genre. It's post-apocalyptic. It's a YA um, version. And well, yeah, it's a YA version. I guess persuasion, they are a little bit older. They're not older here. They're, they're in their 18s. Uh, they're about 18 and they are experiencing, a, a especially uh, Elliot. So the, the female character is named Elliot. She's named after her grandfather. And then, so that's the Anne Elliot character. And then uh, Captain Wentworth would, is named Kai. Later he goes by Malachi Wentforth. Um, and so I, I read a review on Goodreads and they were kind of um, not satisfied with the book because it, they said it, they didn't think it was a romance novel. Um, it follows persuasion very much. Uh, so kind of a slow burn, uh, not a whole lot of romance is really happening. What's, what's happening is it, just like in persuasion, uh, the romantic interest comes back into her life and she's dealing with how, how do I deal with life now that he's back and I, and he, he seems to hate me and, um, I still love him and I have to figure out how I'm going to do life now and, and, and watch him, um, be in love with someone else. So like I said, it, it follows a uh, persuasion to, to the, pretty much to the T, but like I said, in a fantasy version. So it was, it was quite fun. And yeah, I gave it four stars. So that's it. That's what I've been reading, uh, the last kind of on vacation. And, and this week, since I've been back, I've also been dipping in and out of mostly out <laughs> of Georgette Hayer's Regency world, still enjoying that and looking forward to whatever my next read is going to be. I haven't picked it out yet. I'm having a great Jane Austen July. I um, had some friends over last night with their two daughters uh, or three, three of the daughters. And uh, we put together puzzle, Jane Austen world puzzle. I didn't bring the lid here to show you. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, so that's what I've been doing thus far. Um, still, I think there's a lot of time left to go. I have um, a 
couple of videos coming out on uh, talking about different uh, Sense and Sensibility uh, film adaptations. And I, I saw that someone else did a comparison of the Emma Thompson and the the other, the BBC version that uh, Katie at Books and Things rep recommended. And I'm like, oh, darn, I didn't get mine posted before she did. <laughs> but that's okay. There's You can watch more than one video on the same topic. So anyway, until next time, I hope all your books are good books, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.